we are officially recording our is this our 20th session yeah. of uh, producing in pandemic hello colleagues from um uh, from all over the country and the world it is so beautiful to see your faces um welcome welcome today um as always we are doing a relaxed meeting style so cameras on cameras off participate at your best level of comfort we're also um, accessible asynchronously. So we're recording this session. Um, I am going to request that folks mute themselves since we're on Zoom and we've got um, sound bleeding. So just for clarity and access and hearing others, we're gonna ask folks to mute themselves when they're not directly speaking. Um, relaxed meeting style, cameras on, cameras off. Um, um, participate at your level of um, ability and comfort. Also, um, you, um, um, this is being recorded. So if you have to leave early or pop in and out, this will be available asynchronously on producinginpandemic.com. I now recognize I should say the name of the website at the top of the video so people know where to go to find more information, producinginpandemic.com. Um, so we are going to begin with introducing ourselves and checking in. This is us doing a little bit of a national survey. What's happening in producing um, in our country and in our world and in our various practices? So let us know what you're up to. We are trying to use our time um, collaboratively and we actually have three things on our agenda. So I'm going to request folks be thoughtful about your storytelling. And if you wanna share a challenge or a learning, just keep it discreet and efficient if you can. Um, we have on our agenda, um, do we still have folks from Shakespeare's King Lear who wanted to sh do some process sharing for this conversation? Looking around, do I see anybody from? I don't see them. All right, well, if they, um, uh, just keep an eye out on the chat. If they show up, we can add that back into the agenda. Uh, Nancy Duende uh, here from Seattle to share about production of Endgame. Hello, Nancy. Excellent. And we are going to do a field trip to check out spatial.chat. So that's what we have on the agenda. As always, something might come up in our check-in where we go, let's throw the agenda away and we'll do something different. But for now, that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to start us off introducing myself. I'm going to slow myself down. I will, uh, in the chat, our introductory prompts. So I'm just gonna do my name, to give you an access check-in to let you know where I am at. So for, so in case you need to know anything um, for uh, better accessibility. Um, and um, I will also let you know, I'd like a decolonized greeting, so I'll do a land acknowledgement. So I am Claudia Alec. I'm coming from the land of the Ohlone people. The people are still alive. I also like just to take this moment to acknowledge that we have people in concentration camps right now in the United States. And that is a gigantic problem. Um, in that decolonizing moment, it just feels like something I need to begin all of my daily meetings with, apparently. Um, um, uh, I am coming from the Calling of Justice, Transmedia Social Justice Practice. And this week, I've had so many amazing adventures. I've seen a lot of really cool shows. I did um, an awesome, we did the first asynchronous live lab session, uh, no, asynchronous learning lab session for Calling Up Justice, where we got some folks streaming. That was super fun, but I did discover, and I'm so deeply annoyed and irritated, I purchased a bunch of the wrong equipment. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the wrong equipment to talk to my various devices. So the video equipment and the sound equipment is all wrong. So I made these really cute unboxing videos and then I had to make really sad reboxing videos with a Sarah McLaughlin soundtrack. It's deeply irritating. And that means the Calling of Justice uh, studio is not going to, we're, 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 we're delayed by a full week because I now need to order new materials and everything is delayed because of the pandemic. So that's me just sharing my personal pain. But other than that, it's been a week of fun adventures. Um, and, um, and I will share, um, I, will, I will share them inside the conversation. Um, I, um, uh, I am in the middle of a little bit of a bit of a physical flare. So if you see me pull a face, I'm not pulling a face at anything you're saying. I'm just having a muscle twinge. Other than that, all of my access needs are met. We're queuing up in the chat. So hopefully you've just been putting your names in the chat and the next person who's going to speak will just take agency and speak. I don't even have to hand the mic over. I just mute myself. 
Um, I uh, am Robin Gron. My pronouns are she, her, hers. <laughs> I uh, live on Olone and coastal Miwok lands. Both st peoples are still alive, if not very displaced. Um, uh, I work with the Mountain Play as the multi-cap nonprofit people that we all are. Um, one really great discovery that my husband is making, he is doing a, a um, radio show and he found this software from Yale that allows you to, from completely different places, have no latency and be able to talk over each other. So he and his buddy are trying it out and they figured it out between the two of them and it got it to work. Um, and now the next thing is for the three of us to try and figure it out too. So as soon as I get all of that information, I will definitely be sharing it because that seems like a really cool thing to have right now. If not, you know, three months ago, what else? And check. Unmute. Thanks, Robin. Uh, I'm Peter Friedrich from Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I want to thank all of you right now uh, for being here and preventing me for the time being from writing a, uh, a, a screaming reply all email uh, to an email that came out from the administration that I thought was really, really tone deaf on racial equality. Um, I'm not saying I won't send that email but it's it's good just to let it steep and think about it for a minute um there's a lot going on here as far as compartmentalizing that issue away from the covid crisis when back there as we know they're they're super linked and that's kind of been my thing get the word out um uh thank you as well um i threw a fantastic virtual birthday party for my 82 year old mother uh we had 25 family there and uh, she said it was the best birthday she ever had. Um, and, you know, hey, uh, and warm, fuzzy feelings aside, if you ever want to try virtual theater out, guinea pig your family. Use them. Uh, it worked really, really well. And I look forward to, like, being generous with more birthday parties going, going forward. Um, uh, I, am, I am sorry. I am from Choctaw land, by the way, in Jackson, and my access needs are met. Thank you. Hi all, I'm Abby. I'm here calling in from Los Angeles, which is uh, Chumash territory, unceded land of the Chumash in, um, nation. And let's see, I don't know what I'm working on this week. I'm working on so many gosh darn things. <laughs> um, um, but um, I am currently wrangling a large group of participants from our liveness lab who are creating a wiki of the resources that they developed um, and came uh, and conversations they had in that lab, which we were very excited to release publicly to the world, along with some sort of white paper documenting our process of creating that lab, the things that worked, the things that we found uh, as challenges, the information that came up from our participants in terms of their needs along the way, how we were able to meet them, how we were not able to meet them, and uh, all of that will be documented as well, which I'm like, super excited about, being really transparent with process right now and, and providing that out to the community as a place to learn. Um, yeah, uh, my access needs are met, and I'm just really excited to hear where everybody else is at, so thank you. Danny, I think you wanted to go next. Why don't you go next, Danny? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Danny. I go by she, her, her pronouns. Uh, I'm in the Bay Area on a lonely land. I'm going to eat some breakfast. That's my access need. Maybe have some tea. <laughs> I would like to make that known so that everyone knows that they can eat breakfast. <laughs> uh, one of the challenges I experienced last week was I got to be a lovely webinar viewer and an NAACP meeting or an NACP. I don't know if there's double A or one A. The person's video was super laggy, so I couldn't tell. And it was a very like town hall meeting, but they clearly didn't rehearse. They didn't understand the webinar format. 
they also didn't understand like recording and broadcasting so they totally said some like, very secret things as they were broadcasting um so as a person who is using zoom every day of my life now and presenting it was very frustrating to see something like that which is very informal but also like if you had just spent 30 minutes before this you could have like figured this out and not had so much egg on your face but I guess, yes, so it was just very frustrating for me as a person on the technical side being like, no, I could help you, but I can't do anything because we're in webinar format. <laughs> so that was a challenge of my week. Um, that's me, check, on to you, Joan. Thanks, thanks, Danny. Hi, everybody, I'm Joan. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, and I am speaking to you from Osage land, which is currently known as St. Louis. Um, uh, my access needs are met. Um, what is on my mind is voting. Uh, tomorrow is a primary here where Medicaid is on the ballot. Uh, also on my mind is that this week is the sixth anniversary of the killing of Mike Brown, which is where I met a number of people who came in to work on the Every 28 Hours project, which is still extremely relevant and a magnificent project. It's also the Thursday is the signing, the 55th anniversary of the signing of the um, Voting Rights Act of 1965 in which the great John Lewis's legacy is tied up. And so I'm working on all kinds of projects around voting. Um, and uh, if, if you have people, dancers and choreographers, that you think might want to contribute to this project, which is offering honorariums, please let me know. I will leave my email in the chat. The other quick thing I want to say is that I gave several talks last week for the Association of Theater and Higher Education. And um, in terms of the platform, it was a nightmare. I mean, I was just a speaker and the moderators didn't understand how to work the Zoom. They didn't understand how to screen share. They didn't understand how to adjust the volume. They kept some of us on a little tiny gallery view while we were primary speakers. There's a lot that we need to learn and it's unfortunate when it doesn't go well and a lot of energy has been extended, but that's where we are. Grateful for everybody who's here. I am throwing this to Shoshana Ketch. Hi, um, I am Shoshana, she, her, hers and um, I, I am in Vermont, where the land of the Abenaki, Wabanaki, Pinnacock people. Um, I'm also very conscious of what digital land acknowledgement is, and especially in a rural area where not everyone here has access. A lot of um, indigenous folks don't have access to the internet. So it's something I've been kind of reading a little bit about and thinking about of how is the legacy of colonization embedded within our technological structures? Um, what are the carbon footprints of how we use the internet and how that contributes to climate change? And so just been thinking about those kind of things as well. Um, my access needs are met. Thank you very much. I am calling from Sandglass Theater. We specialize in ensemble and puppet theater and work very interdisciplinarily. Um, we just yesterday were part of a region-wide arts initiative where we worked with the local television program to stream live from five different venues and flipping between different hosts and um, had like seven different arts companies in the region contributing and we're raising money for the local chapter of the NAACP and an, another local social justice organization. And um, we raised over $6,000, which was really exciting um, for a small town that we are in. And all the technology worked and it was shocking. Um, and, you know, we had wires stretching across town so we could plug into the one internet that really worked well. So we got like super long ethernet cables and just ran them right through town. Um, <laughs> so that was interesting. We've been doing online puppet building workshops, um, which are actually really successful. We were able to welcome 50 people to our first workshop, which we could never host that many 
people in our space and they spanned across the US and we sent off little kits, puppet building kits so they get the kit and then they can participate in the workshop. Um, and we've been streaming our own archival four decades of shows of Sandglass and kind of being able to really revisit the history of what we do. So we're discovering a lot um, and thank you. I'm happy to be here. Check. Hello, everyone. My name is Shereen Azif. I am uh, checking in from Anishinaabe land, otherwise known as Detroit, Michigan. I am the co-director of Detroit-based theater ensemble, a host of people. We are uh, an ensemble made up of intentionally uh, mi uh, people of mixed backgrounds of ethnicity, culture, uh, gender identity, sexuality, uh, ability, uh, and more. And um, let's see, uh, I, this week I'm playing catch up. Uh, last week we were presented digitally in a, uh, uh, there is an organization in Detroit with who we love called the Sidewalk Festival. And instead of their um, in-person amazing festival that they have every year outside, they're doing a festival called Future Now, um, which they're doing some porch concerts and some online um, premieres. So we were part of the online premieres and last week uh, with our um, short video piece we made called Unboxing Care. Um, we, it was quite an experience. I think number one, it was interesting to be presented digitally instead of self-producing digitally, which was a interesting learning that I had because uh, there, um, I was less in control and, and was in more of the consulting phase as things were going not, were going somewhat wrong. So the initial, um, to just be very to, uh, brief about it, like initially it was told to us that our, our video would be streamed on Vimeo. So I prepared all of the ways for that to happen. And then to find out that they didn't actually have access to the level of Vimeo you need to do live streaming. Um, so then it was just, yeah, because it costs more. Um, and, uh, and so it was just streamed on, on Facebook Live, uh, which um, was, uh, was not able to, we were not able to see how glitchy it would be streamed on Facebook Live with the, with the format of the video that we made. So it was very jumpy in its live premiere. Um, but we worked it out with uh, Sidewalk and sort of sent everybody a link for people to watch it on their own time afterward in the way that it was meant to be. But it was very stressful and learning in the moment. So that's, that's sort of what I've been um, thinking about is this sort of like uh, when you are being digitally presented by others, what are sort of the check boxes to make sure that it, it goes as well as it can, at least on our end too, and support them. Um, so that's me, my access needs are met, uh, and I'm glad to be here, checked in. Hello, uh, I am Nazi Duendi, he, him, his. Uh, I'm currently reaching you from um, the Duwamish territory, otherwise known as Seattle, Washington. Um, I am a director, actor, um, and writer um, who's a part of a theater company called Young Hot Despian. Um, we are a company that centers BIPOC artists and uh, BIPOC work, um, and uh, often our shows are site-specific. Um, my access needs are met, and one discovery for this week is that we're finding that with all this time, um, and, you know, with the world being the way that it is right now, we can sort of invest in ourselves as interdisciplinary creatives um, and sort of work on original content in other mediums. Um, and by sort of building our platform out in that way, we can actually reach more people than usual and then pull them back into the medium which we call home, that being theater. Um, at least that's how I see it right now. We'll see how it works out. Um, and yeah. I'm checked in. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Lawrence. Um, let me just look at the. Uh, my name is Lawrence. I'm he, him, his. Um, I'm 
calling in from the unceded territory of the Ohlone people um, occupying their land um, that is known as Oakland, California within um, our, within colonial uh, uh, namings and titles. Um, I am um, the marketing director at Fool's Fury Theater Company. Um, um, in terms of access needs, I'm actually, I have to, uh, I'm doing some work alongside this meeting. So I will, I will be clickety clacketing um, along as I, um, as I listen. Um, um, so I'm, I will probably, you know, I, I'm all about like multitasking and meetings. So I will have like probably 60, 40 attention when it comes to, but like, um, I, I will be passively participate, participate, nope, I'm just, just gonna forget that. I'm just gonna be passively in this meeting, listening in, um, um, in terms of that. Uh, a discovery from, uh, for producing and digital. Um, I, I think for me, it's, um, you know, figuring out, you know, in the same way Nancy was saying, it's like how artists can, um, and as a marketer, like, you know, um, my mind lives on the internet is how theaters um, and artists can use digital content and especially short form content as a way to uh, to have a circular relationship to 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 the work that we do as as the theater artists on physical stage so like like the 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 multiplicity of that is really interesting to me. Um, and something I want to share for my fellow like um, BIPOC folks and like out like folks who like really want to center um, 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 POC, uh, Black Indigenous POC narratives in their daily lives is there's this place, this digital place called Ethel's Club. And I'm talking a long time right now, so I just want to leave you all with this. It's a set. Um, it's really cool. It's it's essentially a social digital social club um, for BIPOC creators. Um, um, they've gotten really recent press um, for holding like um, um, grieving spaces. But if you haven't heard of them, um, go check them out. They're really cool. Thanks, Lorenz. Good to see you again. Um, Patricia Miller, uh, she or they on Ohlone land, the Ramatush area, otherwise known as San Francisco. Um, access needs are met. Um, resonating a lot with what Anansi said um, about using the digital space to hopefully reanimate the live space, the other live space when there's a chance to enter that. Um, I'm a producer and a director I'm also a theater professor, so I've been spending a lot of time um, wrapping up the summer online classes, getting ready for a whole raft coming my way in 10 days of, of other classes that have gone from live to remote. Um, not letting that eat into the entirety of my life, because as a creative artist, I'm co-creating an interactive theater piece that's going to happen in October that was partly born out of inspiration from this uh, from this group. I'm also supporting a intersection of racial and environmental justice activist action that's happening at the same time. But really, I just want to, again, thank this group, not only for the communication strategies that you, you put up in advance, but also the way that the space is held. I've been in a lot of meetings where someone will begin speaking like this, and 20 minutes later, you know, you're like, hey, hey, come on, connect with me in ways that you would never do in real life. And um, I really appreciate the uh, apportionment of time and respect in this group. Thank you. And I believe Deborah is next. Are you there, Deborah? Deborah may need to be manually unmuted. Um, let me let me try and well, I I don't. I've been actually looking at it to see if I need to. It looks like you're unmuted. How you doing? 
We still cannot hear Deborah. Um, I, I look forward to all of the hilarious clown lotsies that I'm going to see, the Zoom clown lotsies of people being like, because this is a recurring joke in every single meeting I'm in, and it's the funniest thing ever. That said, what we will do is, Deborah, um, when you do have the ability for us to hear you, please feel free. If you have the ability to safely introduce yourself in the chat, we invite you to do that as well. And I'm going to invite the next person to voice um, as Deborah is working through uh, her technical difficulties. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Tammy, and I'm uh, situated here in the uh, Waco, Wichita, and affiliated tribes homeland here uh, in North Texas, uh, Fort Worth, aka Fort Worth. Um, I haven't been in on one of these great gatherings for a while, but uh, a lot of what I've heard and seen here in previous um, chat sessions has really resonated with me and impacts me every time I enter a Zoom meeting and or uh, Kind of collective space like this. So I, I mean, yeah, this has a lot of resonance for me and I appreciate um, the instigators, organizers, and accomplices who put this together and keep it going every Monday. Um, the kinds of things I've been working on um, are uh, kind of uh, real-time video production. I've uh, put two pieces out. One's on YouTube now, one's in Vimeo. Um, I just had a very emotional response to uh, Derek Chauvin's first um, court hearing and I riffed a piece and then three weeks later it's a video uploaded and I'm looking at how to uh, maybe pitch it to some poetry video and film festivals soon. Uh, Tammy is a she her hers and uh, all my needs are met. I'm good. Um, I feel like I want to be chatty because the coffee just kicked in and I have a list of things to share because I haven't been around with you, but I think I'll just hold on for a moment and save some of those for later. The one thing I am really preparing for is um, a conference presentation I'm doing Thursday for a conference titled Walk Bike Places. It's a placemaking conference and I'm speaking about a uh, wonderful project we initiated here in Fort Worth uh, last year, and it's uh, the Jazz Bicycle Tour. We did a social bike ride through east side neighborhoods in Fort Worth, predominantly Black American neighborhoods, and uh, celebrating the, the lives and legacies of musicians who were born and raised here, including uh, Ronald Shannon Jackson and Ornette Coleman. So I get to speak about that. I'm really excited uh, to share because I thought it was a successful project. Have a great week. Thanks. Yeah, 4th of July, uh, that is, um, hmm. yeah, yeah, that's the um, not done yet. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. I don't know if Deborah's Boy. audible yet, but sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we couldn't hear you, Deborah. Um, oh, thank you, Tammy. Am I audible now? We hear you, go, go, go. Oh, hey, Tanya. Okay, thanks, Tammy. This is the yay team. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is her, hers um, calling in from the land of the Pomo, ancestral land of the Pomo, and uh, uh, otherwise known as um, Santa Rosa. And I am uh, in Northern California in transit. And um, happy to be here. Uh, 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 Artistic Director of Fool's Fury Theater. A little discombobulated because I can't see myself. Um, here we go, here we go, look at that. Dealing with the technology live with you. Here I am in the cab of the truck. Um, anyway, so we are working on, um, first of all, always grateful for the circle of folks that are gathered here. So powerful, so amazing what everybody's doing um, and nice to see some old friends on this call as well. Um, uh, Fool's Fury is uh, creating an online digital convening in September the 12th and 13th. We're now up on our website. It's called Build From Here, the future of ensemble theater. I want all of you there. The fabulous Claudia Alec is our guest director and we are going to have some amazing conversations. So that has been actually really grounding to be able to sort of say, this is what we're doing. It's a thing. We're producing it. We know how to do this and are able to do that. And then negotiate all of the um, 
the dialogue. So that's one huge thing that has happened. Um, Lawrence, Claudia, uh, all the rest of our team, like very big shout out for all the support to get that up and out. And we're only in the beginning phases, but like that big initial push is out. So that feels really good. Um, I also attended the Cal Shakes um, Transformative Justice uh, talk with Mia Mingus this uh, fr last Friday. And that was really lovely uh, to be able to, I thought they moderated it well, um, especially with the questions. They, they had people like, write their questions and then they ask you if you wanted to voice your question and it gave a level of humanity that I appreciated um, to hear people's voices and um, and be able to uh, interact with the um, speaker um, directly in that way it kind of it was just a small thing but it 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 helped um, and then to see other people's questions, of course, and also be um, you, responding in the chat to things was, was um, also lovely. And also the speaker was just had humor. And so the, it felt nice to be able to just like uh, respond humorously sometimes because we forget, like we can still laugh about things that are really deep um, and also serious. Um, and also thinking about like the body and how the body um, is is working in this digital sh sphere. I know a lot of people are having neck and upper back um, problems and just kind of wanting to wake up like the 360, um, our balance and um, our spines and remembering that, you know, the head and tail connection uh, and keeping us stacked up rather than leaning forward as if we are future in time, um, you know, is another way to engage with the present moment. So those are some things I'm thinking about. Thank you so much. That's my check. And my access needs um, are just internet and there may be a time on this drive where I will just completely have to drop out because we will have absolutely no connectivity. So I apologize if that happens suddenly. Uh, thanks, Deborah. Um, Tanya here, they, them pronouns, uh, zooming in from the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Mississauga, the New Credit, the Petun, and the Anishinaabe people uh, in what is colonially known as Toronto, Canada. Um, we have a civic holiday here, um, which I dream of a day for my American colleagues and friends that you too have a few more civic holidays a year. Um, and uh, I hear some beautiful themes emerging. You know, gratitude is, is one that's surfacing for me, which I think I've echoed as I'm uh, transitioning into running a 32 week program, probably online um, uh, with content in covering social justice, uh, trauma informed support, one on one support, peer support, facilitation. Um, so doing a lot of thinking through how uh, this eight module with the uh, queer and trans youth program will be will be coming through online. Um, and uh, also I want to echo uh, the <laughs> the occasional frustration of not being able to support when you have the skills and you're uh, in in the room, uh, but uh, but not able to contribute. Um, uh, and it makes me wonder as when I am a poet, uh, we're going to be, I think we had our ninth show. Uh, we're scheduling for the fall with the Toronto Poetry Slam here in Toronto. Um, uh, and we've, I'd say we've slowed down our production schedule to think about audience retention and um, uh, our contributions to racial justice um, in terms of what we do now, what we do long term and what's in the, the medium term. And um, I guess uh, along the lines of being, being tech support, I've, I've thought through that on some, some, with some folks here. Uh, what are the questions you ask to get ready to do a production? I'm also wondering when you're performing, what are the questions that we could be asking as performers to know that the ducks are in a row, so to speak, that the Vimeo will work, uh, you know, without um, a kind of in a respectful way, but in an in a effective practice way. That's my current wondering, just sort of hearing the threads of conversation. 
uh, emerging. Tammy, I love your cat. And I also look forward to hearing when that poem is, is finished. Um, I believe that Falud is uh, next. Thanks everyone for being here today. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Khulud Sawaf, uh, pronounce she, her, hers, and uh, I'm originally from Damascus, Syria, uh, the oldest continuously inhabited city on the planet. <laughs> uh, yet I'm speaking to you from Fayetteville, Arkansas, the ancestral homeland of the Osage, the Kwaba, and the Kado people. Uh, I am um, part of the Calling Up Justice uh, team. Uh, my access needs are met. Uh, and this week, uh, Muslims around the world are celebrating Eid al-Adha. Uh, I'll put in the chat a link about that for those who might not know what that is. And uh, in that, thank you, Tanya. Uh, I was able to celebrate uh, that digitally with uh, other members from my community in 12 countries. We were all able to zoom into the Prayer, prayer from the old mosque in Damascus. And that was maybe one of the most uh, moving moments for me since I've been here in the US eight years ago. This is actually what the mosque looks like in real life. I just have a painting of it just casually above my head. Uh, but it was really a beautiful moment uh, for me that I was so grateful for. And I'm so glad to be here. Check. I believe that was it in the order unless anyone else wants to uh, introduce themselves. They have the who haven't gone yet. Yeah. So in our in our space, we never like to make people feel like they have to speak because that is a thing in these digital spaces where you'll often feel like you've been called upon and you have to be more present than you actually want to be. So if there are folks who've introduced themselves in the chat and that's as present as they want to be, that is cool. But we also like to make sure we have given a moment. So we're gonna have a moment of productive silence where if there's anyone who did not have a chance to introduce themselves and really would like to have their voice heard, we're just gonna pause, let you unmute yourselves and have your voice heard. Or we might just have a moment of silence. The other beautiful thing is we run our own space and these are all rules. So if you want to introduce yourself like in an hour, you totally can. I love having our own space. Um, uh, I just want to do a shout out to two threads I heard in these conversations. Mwah. Just y'all are brilliant and really smart human beings. So one is several folks talked about the experience of being in a meeting that is not being run efficiently and that frustration of being like, I could help you. I want to help you. I know I'm that obnoxious person who's always actually trying really hard to not do that, to not take over somebody else's space because I think I know how to run it better. But I am also, every once in a while, at the end of that experience, giving people some useful links to, to perhaps educate themselves to run their spaces with a little more efficiency. Um, as a performer, um, though that's not fun. Like as an audience member, my job is to enjoy your show the way you will put it together and to not try and take it over. But as a performer, I'm actually kind of obligated to make sure I'm being presented well. So what can we do as artists who are being presented to make sure we're being set up for the most success? And my idea is you all need digital writers. Uh, I created this thing about a year ago for the Calling of Justice practice that I called the Access Writer. And it was, and this was, I invented it mostly for myself, but it was oh, R I D E R, a writer. So the Access Writer was a digital tool. It was literally just a Google form, but I created it so that I could send it to the, um, to the places where I was being traveled to, to perform, so they could ask themselves the questions. So they could figure out, because they didn't, they didn't know. They didn't know what was inaccessible for me. They didn't even know how to talk to me to figure out what they didn't have or how they, how they were designed in ways that were going to cause badness for me as a performer and badness for their presentation. So that was me doing them a favor. And it was just basically like a checklist of questions for them to ask. And then it also had some places embedded where I was just like, I'm going to need this. Would that be a useful thing for artists or acts to have? And 
I'm literally just kind of talking and making this up. So I'm going to mute myself and let other people talk and riff on this idea I just came up with. So I just uh, wanted to mention that for this upcoming conference, the placemaking conference, they gave all of the presenters an opportunity to go into their Zoom space and do a dry run. And it's, you know, you could opt in to do that. And I, I really appreciated that they made that possible. And so we took advantage of the time. There was somebody um, who's with the conference, one of the conference coordinators that came in, you know, kind of opened them. The session and then she said it's all yours you have all the functionality uh, you can both share screen because I'm co-presenting with another person you, you can show uh, share your screen simultaneously all the functionality you have in this uh, dry run space is all the functionality you will have on the day of your presentation so I really really was so thankful that I didn't have to ask for that it was offered so there's that Yeah, I would have to echo what Tammy is saying. I think there's a level of us living in the modern world and access to privilege that we are not clocking either. And also just information that we aren't aware of. Like, for example, one of the um, events that Claudia and I are help, per, help facilitating collaborating work of helpfulness on where like we want to do a dress run. And I said, well, you have to make sure you do it at the same time of the day because one, lighting, two, Wi-Fi connectivity. That's something that people don't clock either, is when your Wi-Fi streams, it streams at different rates throughout the day. So if you do it at different times, you're gonna get different like bandwidth. So that's not something that a lot of people are clocking. And I think making sure that that knowledge and that accessibility is being heard and known by other people, and then people in privilege, people who are creating these spaces should be opening those doors up being like we could do zoom practices or it does everyone know how to do this and making sure everyone starts on the same page which is something we've also all talked about like what is basic zoom level knowledge what is zoom 102 etc um both claudia's oh, document but, what patricia i just want to do a quick shout out we don't tend to as a group uh, do a thing where Claudia calls on people. And yet I want to acknowledge that right now we have a participant who's done the raise hand function indicating I want to talk, right? Um, I'm not sure how to handle that because as it was happening, I was like, oh no, is this a request for me to like manage the talking order and be like, now you have permission to talk next. So I'm just going to ask us all to keep an eye out, maybe keep yourselves in the gallery view. And if you see someone who has their hand up, you know, maybe seed space, be thoughtful. I'm gonna lean back though and continue with my not managing the conversation at all technique and see how that goes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Patricia, please continue. Sorry, I thought that was something I read in the beginning of the agreements of, I don't know what the technique is that we're talking in. Um, but I, I, for me, what this brings up is um, that I, I feel there's a new job in the market. There's a new job in the budget line <laughs> for everything that's being produced right now. Um, and someone wrote, uh, you don't know what you don't know, or, or you know what you don't know and you got to hire the person that knows what you don't know and for us that was really big we are we are primarily artists we are not digital artists we are not versed in all this and we've been finding how much we need partnerships with um for example the local television station has become a presenting partner um or we are working with a company called Livestream Remote, who are based in Colorado, and they, they, their business is, of course, taken off, but they're so good and so efficient, and they're particularly interested in working at reduced prices with artists, ensemble theaters, and activists. So I'm going to put them in the, in the notes if anybody's looking for a partner. I, I really, really recommend them and they handle 
all of that and ask all the questions and do all the tutorials um, and kind of walk you through it and draw all the parallels to what it would like this is what it this is what a tech rehearsal looks like in digital space and this is your like 10 minute call and they do everything as if it was a theater and translate it into digital space so it was really helpful for me i'll put them in the comments yeah, it's curious. This is the exercise Danny and I find ourselves now doing with a lot of other organizations where I thought I was just going to be doing consultations where we'd like be like half an hour. Here's some quick advice. But it does feel like um, it's, a, it's useful to have a digital producer, at least for your first production, help you to translate your practice step by step into this new way of doing things. In my world, I want all of, like, if you work with me at the end of the process, you don't ever have to work with me again. I want you to be able to do it yourself. Um, but um, there's a lot of really amazing digital producing um, organizations out there. There's also a lot of organizations that are now shifting their practice, right? Which I think we need to keep an eye on. So we've got some folks who had a almost solely marketing and communications practice, and they are now recognizing, oh, our digital producing skills would be useful to pair with others. But they're, um, the things that they center in their practice, capitalism, selling, those are things you need to keep in mind when you're deciding to partner with them. The um, partnering with your local broadcasting station, so smart and beautiful. This is how we did the Martin Luther King Day celebration for a full decade in Ashland, Oregon. We live streamed it and then it was, that was my, like, I wanna say like that was the most perf um, successful transmedia production I did for, for a decade and I didn't even think of it that way. It was just community producing and we wanted to keep it accessible. Um, so yes, yes, yes to that. Um, the writer, the access writer is something that exists and we will share it. I will find a link and find a way to share it with y'all. The um, digital writer is an idea that I literally had in the moment as folks were talking. And it feels like that might be an, a useful thing for us to manifest and checklists something that would be useful just as a tool for an individual artist to give to a producer to say, hey, could you answer these questions for me real quick before I perform with you? Um, we created something that we are calling the Asynchronous Learning Lab. Basically, that OBS 101 class was so much fun and it was so dynamic and so many things came out of it. We have a video, we've got technical documents, we've got assets that you can now have access to and i was trying to figure out how do i share it with y'all um in in a way that makes sense since we are all over the place which is how we've created the asynchronous learning lab which is literally just a discord it's just a discord space but it's a discord space with all of the stuff in it that you will be able to access and we are building the asynchronous learning lab um, uh, collaboratively. So big shout out to Zoe and Nanzi who joined me on Saturday at noon to do the first build out of the asynchronous learning lab. And, and it was an exchange because in exchange, they got to get an OBS 101 tutorial and be live streaming. So two artists who had not streamed through OBS got it onto their computers and were live streaming. So the knowledge growing is going strong. And we've begun, um, to build that space out. We're going to do another build out session on Saturday at 1 p.m. PST. Anyone who wants to join me totally can. Um, the results will be you will learn something about digital streaming and you will also um, um, help us to build the site a little bit. Um, I would love to hand the um, microphone over to Nancy and invite Nancy to share their screen and um, talk to us a little bit about your production of Endgame. You used a different uh, streaming technology than we discussed in the space, and I would love for you to share everything you know about it, what you liked, what you didn't like, spill all the tea. And if you can, if you have any video of your production, I saw the production. It was mad cool, y'all. It had a lot of cardboard, and it was Beckett, and it was my jam. So if you have any video, you know, in, in, that you can share, I invite you to. So I'm going to hush and invite you to share your screen and take over. Nancy, the stage is yours. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Claudia. Um, well, let me um, pull up a couple things before I start sharing my screen. Um, luckily, we archived this production, so I can pull it up at will. But uh, yeah. Essentially, 
it was the idea for this production came about while I was in a Chipotle um, reading the news about how we were about to get into a shelter in place. Um, and uh, that was very interesting to me um, because the pandemic didn't really, well, the idea of a quarantine here in America didn't seem that real until, you know, news like that came out. I'm sure a lot of people share that kind of experience. Um, and so I was just thinking about, uh, I was thinking about isolation and I was thinking about um, sort of the, whenever something big like this happens, the apocalypse alarm gets rung. And uh, the, that immediately brought me to um, writers like Beckett and, um, you know, people from the theater, the absurd era, um, who had this perspective of having their world shattered and then having to make art out of that. Um, so we decided to do Endgame um, and we decided to do it from, well, we eventually ended up, do, ended up doing it from our living room, but we originally were just supposed to rehearse it in the living room. So there are a lot of different steps that came into um, the actual final form of the play. Um, now, what we originally were going to do was partner with a local church and see if they would be willing to either loan us their space or their equipment because churches often stream their uh, sermons. Um, so we figured perhaps we could find um, a church that was friendly to secular work and um, partnered with them. But uh, on a whim of a Google search, and as we were sort of getting turned down by a lot of local churches, um, understandably, there was a lot of fear at the time um, around any type of engagement. Uh, I found this little thing called Switcher Studio. And um, it is, I'm going to share my screen now. So Switcher Studio is an app, actually, that essentially allows you to do a multi-camera live stream with your phones. Any phone that has the app can connect to this and essentially over your local Wi-Fi network, um, all of these phones can connect, um, preferably iPhones, and um, be able to live stream something from multiple angles. Um, now, there are a lot of like different tools, like you can get uh, Steadicam tools and uh, even Gimbo tools for dynamic shots that will actually attach to an iPhone. Um, because a lot of people have been making uh, actually feature films from iPhones. Um, Tangerine uh, on Netflix would be an example of that. Um, and so when I found this, uh, it was sort of brilliant because, you know, we all had iPhones and uh, there was one member of our team who um, was very interested in uh, doing a live filming. So our original idea was to do a multi-camera um, filming um, for Endgame. Um, the thing about that is you need a really strong Wi-Fi network. You're gonna have all of these phones being connected. Um, and by the way, all the phones, they're connected to the original phone. It's sort of like the master phone. And so whoever has that master phone can switch the cameras and control the cameras at will. And the, uh, the quickness and the, the consistency of the app is actually astonishing. Um, and so we started uh, having a lot of meetings around that and uh, having our main uh, cinematographer sort of watch the show and pick which angles were going to be present. Um, we didn't plan on having more than three people on camera and perhaps one stationary cam. So a total of four angles that we would constantly switch between with two being dynamic. Um, 
And so we had a whole shot list um, and I sort of gave, and this is sort of the speaks to the value of collaborating with people who know more about something than you and allowing them to do their jobs. Um, we had this whole shot list and um, <clears throat> it was going very smoothly. Now, the thing about having a strong Wi-Fi network, um, I'm gonna keep talking, but I'm gonna grab my charger real quick. Um, the thing about having a strong Wi-Fi network is something that can support that many cameras and that, uh, that much video feed coming in and out has to be something that's had a lot of money put into it. So we were trying to borrow a space from Cornish because some of us were just recently, were about to graduate from um, Cornish College of the Arts. And so had paid tuition to access those spaces. Um, so we were sort of in a long negotiation with Cornish about how we would use those spaces in a safe way, you know, sanitizing and things like that. Um, and they sort of gave us the runaround for a very long time um, until about the week of, they said that they were not able to provide us with the space. Um, so we tried to continue with our multi-camera concept at home. Thing about that is our Wi-Fi was not strong enough. So we immediately ran into that problem and we also ran into the bandwidth problem of when should you stream? Should you stream at peak hours or should you stream early in the morning? What's the decision there? Um, thankfully we ran into that problem earlier um, so that we could adjust the times accordingly. Otherwise, we probably would have foolishly done a typical 7 p.m. theater show and had a lot of problems. Um, so what we ended up doing was one stationary camera and we transformed our living room uh, very quickly, actually. Um, and we turned it into the set of Endgame. And this actually allowed us to this allowed us to be a lot more creative with the set than we otherwise would have been. I'm not sure what the problem is here. Yeah, it looks like it's doing that weird thing where it wants you to fully download your video instead of allowing you to play it inside. Um, my okay. suggestion, Nanzi, is that you stop sharing your screen and get your video all set up. One of the things I've discovered uh, is that when you're sharing your screen, you're, you're taxing your bandwidth. So if you're trying to set a bunch of video, load video, do a bunch of stuff, it makes your computer fully slow down to the point of being dysfunctional, or at least that's what it does to my computer. So I always advise my colleagues, if you can, set all your elements up beforehand so that when you're doing your storytelling, you're just clicking tabs, because your computer's going to freak out if you're trying to make it do stuff while you're sharing your screen. This Switcher Studio is so interesting, though. I love it. Um, yeah. And I also love that, that, that in our introductions, we brought up the bandwidth issue and the time of day issue. It's not true for everyone. It depends on what your plan is. So, like, if you're, if you're willing to pay a little extra, you can pay for that plan that gives you consistent Wi-Fi signal strength all day long. But you got to pay extra for it uh, in my location in the United States. I'm also assuming this is different depending on your location. Yeah. Um, How are you doing, Nancy? Do you have it all set up now? Yeah, so luckily I actually had downloaded it earlier. Um, so I'm going to play it for my computer. Um, so, oh, the other thing about Citrus Studio is the free version of the app uh, puts a watermark a really big watermark at the top of the screen. Um, so we wound up uh, using, we, we wound up purchasing it for about $70, I believe, um, in order to get rid of the watermark. And there was another feature, I think, something to do with broadcasting. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't remember what that feature was, but it allowed us to do a lot. So anyway, here's how the place started.
Nanzi, is it playing? Yes, they're just in a tableau. Oh, thank you. This is Becky. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> May I ask a few questions while we're watching? Yes, please do. We're not just here to watch the show. <laughs> I, I, I was a low key. I was just watching Beckett for a minute. That's just what happened. <laughs> I just started just watching Beckett. Um, um, so were all of the performers, did you all live together? Yes, so this was, and that was the, the disclaimer put um, in the description, which sort of served as a digital program, um, was that this, entire production was made in compliance to CDC guidelines. We were all one household. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there was no point in which someone outside was involved. Um, so it was very fortuitous we were able to do it that way. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, and this was a production that you, so this is just basically a production that you built in your own home. What room is this that your set is in? What, what room did you transform to make this set? Um, this room was technically, we don't live here anymore, but this room was the dining room. Um, and, uh, so there was little more than a dining room table in it. Um, and this was the room that we had been rehearsing in as a makeshift rehearsal space. And so we ended up transforming it um, with a lot of paper bags and a lot of cardboard and a lot of gorilla tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, what was, so what was the size of your cast and what was the size of your technical team? So we have a cast of four in this and then there is me. Um, there is Quentin Van Steenberg, who is the assistant director and the genius behind this whole set. Um, and then uh, our video consultant was Christian Zimbabwe. One, one, one day suddenly was a heap. A little heap the impossible. All right, let's stop sharing screen because I'm once again just watching Beckett. I really enjoyed this production. I also um, uh, loved the um, brilliance of of being able to, because uh, this was one of the streaming productions I saw early on in the pandemic. I was so impressed that um, a director um, was able to pull off having an entire company that he just lived with and, and manifested a production. I was like, that is amazing. Um, and I, I also have this recollection that there were background noises in your production that felt like they were perhaps background noises from the street. Did I make that up or did you design in a soundscape to make it sound like there were background noises that were like street sounds? Um, complete transparency, they were just background noises. Um, and uh, 
it's very funny because like we were that was very much in the center of Capitol Hill um, in Seattle. And so um, certain times of day are quieter than others. And so we chose a good time to stream for bandwidth, but not the best time for background noise. Um, so there were a couple moments where uh, the outside world sort of um, came in, but um, yeah. But it felt dramaturgically brilliant. I recall as I was sitting at home alone, taking my little notes, being like, oh, this is why I think this is the future of digital producing. Um, uh, I, I, I recall going, wow, the mezzanine of the world, the world in crisis um, is, is part of the story of this production. So I can hear yes. sirens. I can hear crisis outside the windows. And I was like, this is, this is my end game. This is my jam. I really enjoyed it. Um, so you ended up only using one camera. Yes. What was your sound source? How were you getting audio to that camera? Oh, it was literally from the phone. It was coming from the phone. And kind of amazing that it was so crisp. <laughs> it was very fortuitous that way. Um, yeah, uh, the way we, if you notice, there's a lot of newspaper clippings all over the set and whatnot, which is sort of a last minute idea that I had. Um, and so it, you can't see them too clearly, but um, there's a lot of pandemic headlines and sort of like also photography taken from other parts of the world because other crises are also happening, um, crises. And um, uh, we're very much a, not just make something out of nothing, but really use what you've got and be in tune to your environment, which is why we often do site-specific. Um, so I do consider this to be site-specific um, and that anything that was around it was fodder for the production. Um, you know, we did the brother size in a parking garage in November and there's a moment where the main character leaves and is told to drive away. And just at that moment, a car had peeled off in the street behind us just as he had left. <laughs> and it was one of those moments of like just a live experience that <laughs> happens to add to what you're doing. Um, so, well, yeah, my, colleagues, my colleagues, do you have questions that you would like to ask Nanzi about the technology, about the production? Um, I have one last tech question for you, which is this, and I don't know if you even had a chance to test this. I'm curious, can you use, could you do a production with cameras from several different houses? Like, could I, in theory, do a production with, with people in my entire apartment building? Or do you need to have Wi-Fi proximity to each other do, you, do your cameras need to be close to each other? So that's I'm my last sure. question. And then I want to invite other folks to ask questions too. I'm pretty sure you need Wi-Fi proximity because they're sharing that Wi-Fi network. Um, so once you leave that area, the cameras can no longer connect. Yeah. Um, as far, yeah, that's my understanding of the app so far. So just because I'm not as good at this stuff, you're. It, like if you and I were to be in using the same app, we would not be able to do it because we're on different Wi-Fi networks. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's very similar. If anyone here games, um, you can sort of uh, like if you do computer gaming and you have two computers under one Wi-Fi network, they can just communicate with each other through that network and game together um, versus if you're gaming with people from around the world, you need to connect to a server, which connects to other servers. It's a more complex infrastructure. Yeah. Um, let me see. So this sounds like something will increase sound technology. I don't know if increased sound technology would have lessened the effect. Um, we very much wanted to bl blur the line between this being a staged production and this being this digital production. And so I think it worked in our favor that we didn't have, say, a boom mic or anything like that. Um, but uh, I could definitely see scenarios in other productions and other situations where having a mic maybe on a lapel or something like that could actually increase the effect depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, I've even thought about live productions that have a live stream element in which, you know, 
scenes that people who tune in on the live stream could see scenes that people in the live experience wouldn't get, you know, like there's a lot that you could do there in terms of um, having a multidimensional story um, and having a rewatchable experience. Um, I know you used one phone, but did you say that the app allows for a master phone and that phone can control? Yes, the master phone can control other phones, including how they zoom, oh, great. Um, where they focus. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, or you switch to that phone, right? Before you give, now this, now we're seeing what this phone is filming, you can edit that shot from your master phone? I think so. I, I invite you to check. I invite you to check because um, you can check all of these features for free. That's the beautiful. That, like that sounds like you have a, a now you have a lot like a TV studio with your phone, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, so I'm going to take the invitation to check this out for free, um, and I I am going to recommend that we all like this feels like an interesting tool, an interesting potential new thing to add to some of our creative uh, 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 toolboxes. Um, but as always, check it out, try it out for yourself, see see how you can make it work. Um, in this moment, in our last 15 minutes together, I wanted to invite y'all to join me on a field trip. We're going to go check out spatial dot chat so y'all our big thing that we've been trying to figure out um as a group is how do you do open space technology digitally how do you have a big group of folks come together from remote locations gather in a digital space but then have the ability to have each person inside the space have their own sense of agency and be able to go you know what I'm going to go have a conversation with this person over here and not have to ask someone for permission or create a special chat room. Is there a way to technologically do this? So we wanted to try out spatial dot chat right now because we're being recorded and other people will hear this. This is me wagging my finger at spatial dot chat. They made a silly choice because of capitalism. So they had their platform available for folks to check out fully for free. And then for some reason, they decided to make it a $50 fee to check out all of their options. And I'm like, y'all, I am not going to pay you $50 to stress test your technological app for you. And also, I am not going to low key do a commercial for your app, potentially for hundreds of people, because isn't that what we're kind of doing right now? That said, I want to try the technology out, so let's check it out but I'm wagging my finger at spatial.chat. This could have actually, if they had not been trying to maintain their own, I, I think they made a financial choice that was about protecting bottom lines and making profit. And I think perhaps they're trying to make short-term money when they should have been making long-term relationships. But let's check out spatial.chat. Um, so I'm, I, I, full transparency, chaos is about to ensue. I'm not exactly sure how to do this without causing horrible feedback loops. So. We're all going to spatial.chat, S-P-A, just spatial.chat, and there's a try me function. If we all use the try me function, we should all, in theory, go to the try me room. Um, is there a special link for the try me space? Does it create a special link? I'm not sure. So I'm going to click the try me. I'm going to share my screen and, and do this right now in real time with y'all. We're going to see if I'm causing chaos. So here we are. Hi, spatial dot chat. I just talked a whole bunch of smack about you. How you doing? Let's check you out. I'm going to click try me. I'm going to invite everybody else to do the exact same thing I'm doing. Now, this is the moment where chaos might happen. So I'm going to mute myself. All right, so I am now.
to Zoom. I'm inviting yeah. everyone in Zoom to Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, darn it. I'm gonna go. Hey, Nancy. How you doing, Nancy? No, Nancy, where'd you go? Don't go. I'm trying to go to to you, Nancy. Hi. Yes, the closer to the circle you are. Here, I'm Say that again. Yes. So like go go ahead and do well, we can do a test now. Go ahead and talk and move your circle. away from me. All right, I am not hearing Robin at the same volume anymore. All right, my friends, I'm going to invite us to go back to Zoom and leave spatial chat.
that was such a hot mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so y'all, that's that's what happens when the company doesn't want to like do me the favor of, of actually allowing me to set up a real test. We end up doing really messy stuff like that. Um, I sense that perhaps if Spatial Chat had allowed me to fully actually do this, we might have found out that Spatial Chat has some different pluses or minuses. But for this, just initial try me. How was it? What did you think? I thought it was really interesting. Um, in in is this for for meetings only, or do you are you are you thinking that this is something to experiment with and see if we can do bake it into a performative space as well, or is that pos Is that a thing with this? Okay. That would be like a what are those choose your own adventure novels? You could have. <laughs> That's exactly it. How this narrative uh, goes for forum theater? Roop, go over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I've written immersive pieces where the performative score was initiated by the performer. So, I mean, by the audience member, where you got to choose the order of the show by walking mm -hmm. around the space and experiencing the. Per so, yeah, possibly, yeah. I wonder too if this this instead of what was the app? live lab that we did, if this could be a backstage area because this is not you don't you can't private chat you pretty much stay all talking to each other. You can mute each other's sound like without co-host permissions and you can do all the sharing. Huh. So if you're in spatial chat, you can just text all of everyone at the same time right. versus like Zoom where you only have to do, you can only either do everyone or singular people, you know? I will say this and I'm, I, as I am getting deeper and deeper into creating an almost exclusively digital life, I'm recognizing that the business structure of most of these companies is one that doesn't work for me. They all want me to subscribe and they all want me to do what feels like in the moment, a real reasonable subscription fee for a month. But I'm like, I don't wanna, I'm not willing to pay $40 a month for the rest of my life to have the ability to do this one thing. I, I feel like they're asking for more than I'm willing to give for that functionality. So I will name that their price point right now is not making them attractive to me. But I do like the idea of being able to do that thing online. Tammy had mentioned that you had an experience that was like this before online? Um, yeah, I was living in Austin at the time and I had friends who were in the ACT Lab, Advanced uh, Communications Technology Lab that's based in the RTF. Uh, department at UT and there was a grad student who was um, and maybe he's behind spatial chat I don't know but he uh, was developing a they were called multi-user space multi-user moves they had different acronyms back then and you could enter and there were people from all over the world and they had an avatar you just choose your avatar and then jump little hillsides and mountains and you know you could create a different landscape features also and uh, there was this guy who kept or a person who kept uh, zooming up right next to me and it, <laughs> his avatar was staring right at me and he kept being saying inappropriate things so um yeah i don't know who all is going to be using this kind of uh, app but maybe the price point is to keep those kinds of folks out i don't know i don't know um, what I love is that I was confusingly at the same time as I was listening to you, Tammy, I accidentally hadn't left the spatial chat space and I could hear someone in the background going, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And I was like, who is that? What is happening? And then I finally realized it was, so I was muting other people. I for, uh, forgive me for muting you. I was trying to figure out where this mysterious voice was coming from. Um, well, this okay. was a, oh yes, please go ahead. I was, I was gonna wrap us up with wrapping up comments, but please go right ahead. One quick question. How did they put us all in one room? I mean, all we did was like went to the spatial chat and click try me. I, I, I feel like I wouldn't sleep if I don't know the answer to this. So from what I understand, the try me space is just a public open space where everyone can go. So before you guys actually got there, that's why I had the link was the try me and there were like two Japanese people just talking to each other and I was like chilling in the corner. And then they left before we all like invaded, which was kind of good for them. <laughs> <laughs> but the first time we tried it as well, Claudia tried it and there were like just two randos in there and they were like, hey, this is cool. And so they were just like talking. 
Um, so right now it's just public free for 50 people to try me space. Um, <laughs> but if we if we wanted to create a room just for us to try, which would have been the more controlled um, experiment way, um, they wanted to charge me $50 for more than four users. And that was like the entire point of me testing this is to see what is to stress test it with like 12 users, with 15 users. For our purposes, we need to find out, is this usable for a group? Um, can a crowd really, really take advantage of this? Um, well, my colleagues, it has been a pleasure hearing about your artistic practice, the amazing work you're doing in your various locations. I am so happy that you are healthy and well. I'm sending you all the good vibes. Keep washing your hands, keep social distancing, keep wearing those beautiful masks. Please creating, uh, please keep creating the beautiful artwork that you're creating. Nanzi, thank you so much for joining us to share your practice and introducing us to another cool app that we are gonna be trying to check out. And we will be back here next week, 11.30, I mean, sorry, 10 o'clock, Pacific Coast time, 10 o'clock, to do another peer exchange. And then on Saturday, we will be doing a second all session, the Asynchronous Learning Lab. Um, more, more information and emails to come. Um, anyone who wants to hang out with us, we are now going to go into our planning next week's meeting. Um, so I'm going to hit stop on record. I hit stop on record. Stop record.